Hey, we're back. So what I've done here is we know that these three pedals are working perfectly. So what I've done is I've measured the distance from the underside of the pedal to the top of the magnet. And right at the moment, that measurement is approximately seven eighths of an inch. Here, I'll turn it this way, you can see it a little easier. It's approximately seven eighths of an inch. So, as we move along, chances are, if the last pedal is any indication, it's going to get closer as we move, but we'll take it one step at a time and always check before you put the spring in, make sure, just put the pedal in place for half a second and move it up and down and make sure that that magnet doesn't get too close to that sensor because it'll crush it if it is, if it is. Okay, so getting the spring in, this is a little tricky. What you? Sure, the, the, because they look different. Okay. These, this is what the spring looks like now. In the diagram, I guess he must have used a different type of string, a spring originally. We have this kind now. And just it's a little finagly, and you, it just takes a little bit of work. But we find, so far, the easiest way is to put the spring in the hole under the pedal first. And then, holding the spring in place with your left hand, get the pedal in its slot and then grab the spring from underneath and you'll see there's a hole right underneath there. You want to get it in the hole but you got to make sure you get it in all the way in the hole. There. You can feel when it goes in all the way. And once you've got it in, then just reach over. Make sure. Just reach over, grab a screw. Now what we do is we don't screw it in all the way at first. We, we get, we don't want to strip the hole. We just get it started here. And we can get, in fact, get it started. There we go. We get it started. I hate Phillips. In the hole. Okay. Yeah, it just doesn't want to get started. There we go. There we go. We got it now. Okay, I think the Torx screws would have been better than that. Okay, so what we do now is before we put the screw in all the way, we check to make sure the pedal's working on the keyboard. And is it working? Do it again. Not working? No. Maybe it's too close. Okay, so I'm going to take it out. It was working. No, it wasn't. We haven't tried it yet. Oh, it was the, oh, it was the other one. The other one's working. Okay, so you got to pop it out, spring out again. It seems chances are if it's too close, it won't work. So put it in a little bit and then have another go. Okay. Is it working? Yes. Okay. Here. I just put the magnet in a do, little further and now it's working. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Try it again. Yep, I can yeah. see it. So okay. that seems to be, you would think that it would work better being closer, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It seems that it has to be a, a, at least a certain distance away or it won't work properly. And then once you've got it registered, bang. And there you go. And that's how you do it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to put the rest of the pedals on and we're going to keep doing what we've been doing, which is to adjust this to where we think it's supposed to go 
but if you're going to err on any side, put the magnet, make the magnet farther away from the sensor. I think it just, there's a certain magnetic field in which the magnet will affect the sensor, and if it's too close, I think probably even Alessandro, I think, mentioned something about it, is that it may read on permanently. It doesn't know when there is no signal. So we'll just take it a step at a time, go one pedal at a time. So we've got the uh, another pedal in. What we're finding, wow, it's really touchy. What we're finding is that um, we're having to put the magnet farther up into the pedal and that it works better to err on the side of the magnet being up farther away from the sensor. But what we've done is we've wired up our speaker system and we can actually hear now. You can hear the, the sounds now. So even as we're introducing a new pedal into the slot, we can actually hear the MIDI being triggered as we're putting it in place. So we'll get another pedal and do it again and see how that works. We have uh, discovered something uh, that I think is really important. What we found is that if the sensor is too far out, it won't release the note. It'll trigger the note, but it won't release it, even when the pedal's all the way up. Uh, I think that this is a good example of where it's worth getting your software before you start assembling your pedal boards, because the, it, the only way we could tell for sure uh, was by listening to the tone through the speakers, we knew that it, the trigger was not, it was closing, but it wasn't releasing. So that's what we found out now. And sometimes you really have to push the magnet fairly far into the underside of the, uh, the pedal in order for it to, to realize that the magnet is in probably not proximity to the, uh, the sensor. So. As we get more things, we'll tell you all about it. We've discovered a seems to be a better way of putting the, uh, the spring in. The difficulty lies in getting the spring <laughs> in both holes and doing it. Um, the other thing we found out too is that as you get close to the center, the spring is compressing onto the tabletop and it won't go into the hole. So what I've done is I've raised up the front so that the spring has a little bit of clearance underneath so we can get it into the hole properly. So once it's in the hole uh, in the pedal board, then Laura finds the hole and then hold it in place and I put a screw in the back. The pedal board is finished. We had uh, a few problems towards the end. It got difficult to get the pedals in, uh, but we got everything going and everything fitted in properly. Um, some of the things that are really important to note if you're going to build something like this from the kit, it works a lot better if you hook the um, MIDI into your software and use that because you need to know uh, whether or not it's triggering the note and if it does trigger the note you got to make sure that it triggers the note on and triggers the note off so if you get the sensor too or the magnet too close to the sensor it will trigger on but it won't trigger off 
So if you get a note that won't stop playing, you have to pull the magnet farther away from the sensor. That seems to be uh, what worked for us. Um, I think probably there could be some variables in the sensor and there could be some variables in the magnet as well, so it's not consistent. Uh, the other thing to note also, if you're using hopped work for your, your sounds, uh, and if you're using the, uh, the hop work light, which we're using right at the moment, uh, it's using the St. Anne Mosley organ. Bear in mind that the St. Anne Mosley organ only has 30 pedals. So it won't register the upper two pedals. We got all in a panic because we thought it's not working. We can't get the upper two pedals working. But what we noticed was that on the little box, and maybe I'll get Laura to come around here and show over here, right over here. Mm, hold on. Hang over, okay. Now, the, what, what I was talking about is that you've got this little box here. And in order to, to get your, your MIDI data into your computer, you have to hook the plug into the box. And then we bought a USB a female to male extension cord to run that into the computer. And you'll notice on the top of the box that it shows you that there is power going to the keyboard and that every time you press a note down it'll register the note. You can see it flashes. That lets you know that you're getting a MIDI signal. So as you'll notice I'm pressing this pedal down but there's no sound coming out whereas this pedal you'll get sound because the St. Anne's Mosley uh, uh, organ has got high F, but it doesn't have F sharp or G. So, if your top two pedal notes aren't working, it could be your software. So don't get in a panic about that. Uh, the other thing, we've mounted this box here, and uh, it also has, for those who need it, it also has a five pin out as well. Because um, I was uncertain. Uh, we wanted to go with USB because it's far more efficient than using a 5-pin connector. But it has the 5-pin connector if you have some sort of software or hardware that you need to use 5-pin. Um, uh, PMK uh, does give you that option. So that's great. That's well thought out. So anyhow, we're going to move the pedal board now and put it in place for where it's going to go. So we'll come back when that's done. So there it is. This is where it's going to be. And now all we have to do is build the rest of the organ around the pedal board. That's coming up. Uh, we're in the process of working on uh, a case to hold the keyboard. And uh, of course, I got to make a bench. We're going to make a nice new bench. And uh, so that will be part three when we make the, the case for the, uh, the keyboards and uh, the bench to sit on. So stay tuned for part three.